You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. A month ago, you might remember we chatted to Joanna Sharp, who was about to embark on an attempt to become the first person to cycle the length of Australia solo in the fastest time. She was planning to cycle solo from Darwin to Melbourne via Uluru and also along the way raising funds and awareness for bowel cancer in New Zealand. So how did she go? Let's find out. Let's bring Joanna Sharp back into Weekend Sport. How did it go, Joanna? Oh, thank you so much for having me on, Piney. We're back in New Zealand and I'm really proud to say that the little Kiwi crew that could um, has now I've become the first person ever to cycle the length of Australia non-stop in 11 days, 11 hours and 34 minutes. That is incredible. For those who didn't hear our first chat with you, uh, tell us a bit about the build-up to this, the, the challenges you faced, and, and then maybe go on to tell us about the 11 days, 11 hours and 34 minutes. <laughs> well, look, many professional crews um, internationally have tried to cycle the length of Australia, and for anybody who's been in the outback, you can probably understand why they've never made it happen. It's a desperately challenging environment from the climactic conditions to the, the many critters you encounter um, and the wildfires and you name it. But it's also it's one straight road for 3,600 kilometres. And from a cycling perspective, that puts an unknown toll on the body. So I, I don't know that there's actually another stretch of road where a cyclist has tried to cycle that long on a flat piece of road. So Greg Payne, who you guys know from Biosport, um, he's worked with me a lot in the last 12 months for what we might encounter, sitting the body in the same position for, for 3,500 Ks. So ultimately, I guess that's why it hadn't been achieved before. Um, but myself and five amazing Kiwis, we, we decided to give it a go um, after years of planning. And we left Darwin and uh, we managed to make it through the outback via Uluru. We made it as far as Adelaide. We got the subject of ratification, the Guinness and World Ultra Cycling Association world record for doing that. And then... Um, Sadly, I spent quite a bit of time in hospital, <laughs> so we never made the victory lap into Melbourne, but the main goal was achieved, and, and we're just over the moon to be the first to do it. Hang on, you glossed over a little bit there. You spent a bit of time in hospital. <laughs> what, what happened? Well, look, as you can imagine, and I'll use terms that don't put anyone off their afternoon tea, but, <laughs> but when you sit on a bike seat in the same position, which for me is obviously a Chapter 2 aero bike, aerodynamically set up, you're putting your soft tissue be it male or female, into a pressure position for 11 days and a, and a bit. So from that perspective, you know, as I said, even Greg Payne wasn't quite sure what we might encounter, and we've been training for it. However, I ended up with um, a bone-deep pressure wounds, you could call it, um, in my groin, together with some necrotized soft tissue. I'll just leave it at that. Um, and so that's involved a little bit of work from plastics um, and gynae to get me back on the road to health. But, but thanks to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Adelaide and Middlemore Hospital here in New Zealand, I'm now doing very, very well. And just, yeah, reveling in the excitement, I suppose, that we've been able to yet again put New Zealand on the world stage as being the first to achieve something that nobody else has managed so far. So I'm just over the moon with the crew and, and, and what they did for me. Absolutely magnificent. Well, the battle scars, I, I suppose you could say, were worth it. What an achievement, Joanna. What was the hardest part? What, what, what was the most challenging part of all of this? Now, it's funny because I think anybody who's, um, who's followed me on Instagram or um, taken a look at some of the footage would probably say the wildfire's piney because you're so remote. Like, bear in mind, we can go for a day, two days without seeing even a roadhouse in the outback. So when a wildfire takes hold, um, the Australian authorities don't do anything about it. They can't. They haven't got the resources. So there was about the first five days where we were riding into extremely strong headwinds and we encountered so many wildfires. But at one point, I'm riding along the road and with hindsight, I'm sure the crew probably think, why did we let a ride through it? But the flames which were engulfing both sides of the road got caught by the wind, 
blowing the sparks and the flames across the road. It, I, I mean, honestly, I don't know what it must have looked like. The, the film that's been made of, of this adventure is going to be pretty epic, but it must have looked like I was evil Knievel riding through these outrageous flames and I could feel the sparks hitting me and, and the bike. Um, so that, that was certainly exciting and challenging, but um, probably the most challenging part is it's hard to describe how remote you are there's no communication there's no cell phone coverage you know there's no you know everything we have is contained within two camper vans you're in a dry area there's no water so we had to prepare for the fact we wouldn't be able to get fresh water for four or five days at a time and and all of the things that come with that when you're trying to stay hygienic as a as a sports person you know you know that hygiene is really important you're relying on water for your nutritional needs um so the logistics and the operational requirements around being so remote, certainly, um, well, for the crew, were probably the most challenging. All I did was sit on my bum for 11 and a half days and turn a few pedals. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, I think you might be understating the case just a little bit there, Joanna. But um, look, I, I know that, you know, this wasn't achieved by yourself and you've mentioned your team a couple of times. Just, just absolutely outstanding. Uh, so what, uh, I mean, the, when you... When you realised that you'd done it, I know you had to go into hospital and things like that, but was there a, a euphoria once you actually realised and it had sunk in what you'd done? Yeah, it was crazy, actually. So we came down, um, we, we sort of almost exited the outback, you could say, once we got to sort of Port Augusta. And um, South Australia is very, very remote in itself. So you really don't start to see anything at all until you get to Port Augusta. And when we made it there, we, we knew that we'd, we'd made the first of three World Ultra Cycling Association world records. So that was a really euphoric moment. And it was at that point that I was like, I mean, I never doubted we would do it, to be quite honest. I... Millions of people probably didn't think I would do it, but I knew we could do it. But when we got to Port Augusta, it felt really real. And we started to sort of hit a lot more. Um, I'm using civilization in adverted commas here because it's certainly very small settlements. But then at that point, it was like, crikey, you know, we're not that far from Adelaide. Um, I knew that I was physically in poor shape, let's, let's say. But I really, really did believe that we would make it to Adelaide. And actually, I thought I would, I would make it on to Melbourne with a little bit of assistance, but sadly, that wasn't to be. But, but yeah, certainly at Port Augusta, that's when we, we all started to see, oh, my goodness, look at where we are on the map. You know, this is outrageous. We're, we're not that far on the scheme of things from Adelaide. We're really going to do this. So the ride into Adelaide was just brilliant. We'd sort of um, passed most of what we'd call the road train traffic um, by that point. Um, and yeah, just really enjoyed that that last trip into Adelaide. It was just fabulous. So, is the second half of twenty twenty four going to be slightly more relaxing for you? I certainly hope so, Tiny. <laughs> um, a little bit of off the bike time, sadly, I have to say. Um, that's that's a bit of a shame because I do love being out on my bike. But but yeah, there'll be a little a few weeks of off the bike time whilst things recover, and then I'm looking forward to being back home in Coromandel Town and. Uh, getting out on my bike with my friends, going for some coffee rides and just relaxing. And then we'll see, um, we'll see what the next build-up looks like probably when we get a few months down the track. And, and hopefully if we can keep, uh, keep raising some awareness and funds for Bowel Cancer New Zealand during Bowel Cancer Awareness Month, which is this month, that would be absolutely fabulous too. Absolutely outstanding what you've done, Joanna. Congratulations on on overcoming something that 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 most of us will never even be able to comprehend, let alone achieve. It's a, a remarkable thing you've done, and as you say, raising funds and awareness for bowel cancer New Zealand as well. Uh, you know, just a just huge kudos to you. Thanks for uh, sharing the journey with us, and I hope it is a more relaxing back half of the year for you. Thank you so very much, Piney. I really appreciate your time. No, I appreciate yours, Joanna. Thanks indeed, and congratulations once again. Joanna Sharp, who uh, became recently the first person to cycle the length of Australia solo and broke a world record in the process. Terrific stuff and wonderful to raise awareness and funds for bowel cancer New Zealand as well. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio.